I'm Rick Smith, and this is Labor History in Two. On this day in labor history, the year was 1917. That was the day IWW leader Frank Little was buried in Butte, Montana. Little had been lynched on August 1st by police agents thought to be working for the despised Anaconda Copper Company. He had arrived in town to help organize 14,000 striking copper miners. Devastated by the deaths of 168 miners in the June fire at Granite Mountain and Spectacular Mines, mine workers formed the Metal Mine Workers Union and walked off the job. Frank Little had previously worked as a hard rock miner and organizer for the Western Federation of Miners. He also took part in the free speech campaigns on the West Coast. Little was involved in early drives to industrially organize oil workers and lumberjacks. He voiced his opposition to the First World War and sought to stop workers from enlisting. When Little arrived in Butte in July, he worked to build strike support, picket lines, and spread the strike to other trades across the city. Early on August 1st, six masked men broke into the boarding house where he was staying. He was beaten and taken from his room. His assailants tied him to the bumper of their car and dragged him through the granite streets of Butte to the Milwaukee Bridge where he was hanged. An ominous note was pinned to his bullet-ridden body with the words that read, Others take notice, first and last warning. It included the numbers 3, 7, and 77, as well as the initials of other union organizers in the area. As many as 10,000 marched in his funeral procession. Days after his lynching, martial law was declared. Labor radicals were rounded up and charged with espionage. The miners' strike and union were crushed. Labor History in Two brought to you by the Illinois Labor History Society and the Rick Smith Show. For more information, go to laborhistoryin2.com, like us on Facebook, and follow us on the Twitters at Labor History in Two.